My last video was an overview about all the modifications I did to my mini lathe till now. In this video I also shared some of my future plans for the machine. So if you are interested check out the latest video on my channel. One of the things I mentioned to redo was the compound slide. It was the first thing I modified on my machine and also was the very first video on my channel. However, after a few years now, there are some things I don't like anymore. The first thing I want to change are the bearings for the compound slide lead screw. I used two thrust needle bearings and one radial bearing. I want to change this now for two small angular contact bearings. Along with that I have to make a new bearing block, a new dial with a clamping mechanism and change the fine threaded spindle into an Acme thread one. I designed the whole assembly so that the hand crank can easily be detached from the spindle as it often collides with the tailstock especially when the compound slide is set at an angle. To see how everything works together I designed all the parts as a 3D model first before starting to machine. As there are quite a few interesting parts to make I decided to split the build process into two videos. This way I could finish the first video quicker and hopefully release the second part quite soon. In this first part I will make the bearing block, the dial and the dial clamping nut. In the second part I will make the new spindle, some bushings and a miniature anti-backlash nut. So for now we start with making the bearing block. I'm starting with a piece of 30 by 15 mm unknown steel. The old bearing block was made out of aluminum, but I think steel is the better choice now. A dead center put in between the life center of the tailstock and the workpiece helps by aligning the workpiece in the lathe chuck. Turning nice and tight bearing seats on a small hobby machine like mine is always a little bit critical, but with sharp polished inserts I managed to get two excellent press fit bearing seats. Of course at this stage I don't want to force the bearing all the way in, but it already feels like a really good tight fit. And the same process again on the other side.
With the second bearing seat nice and tight, all the critical work is done and it's now just a thing of bringing the part into its final shape. And that's the almost finished bearing block. The holes for the two mounting screws will be drilled later, when I've made all the other parts. Also some finishing touches, including nice chamfers, will be made in the second part. Next I made the new dial from a piece of 35mm C45 steel. The previous dials I made for the machine are all out of aluminum, so this is actually the first dial I made out of steel. So now it's time again for the good old cut knurling tool. I made this tool a few years ago, so if you are interested there is a video on my channel on how I built this. Cut knurling, especially in steel, is still a little bit tricky for me. But if you are lucky, you get really nice results. With all the turning done, it's now time for engraving the dial. To do this, I built this poor man's dividing attachment for the machine spindle. You also find a video on this attachment on my channel. The adjustable hard stop for the carriage helps by achieving a consistent length of the dial lines. And again, you find a video on making this helpful device on my channel. To block the spindle, I just wedged a piece of wood between the lathe chuck and the headstock. And now we can start to engrave each line with a thread cutting tool mounted at 90 degrees.
for all the poor man's technique shown here, I think the result is actually quite good. Finally, a small stone takes off all the burrs from the engraving process. For cleaning up the backside of the part, I just pushed it on an aluminum arbor with a light press fit. Now only the numbers are missing. As I have no engraving machine, I have to punch them into the part. This ugly chick helps by punching the numbers in a little bit more controlled way. And again, I'm removing the burrs with a stone. And that's the finished scale with all the machining and engraving done. I'm not 100% happy with how the numbers turned out. The one for example was crooked on the punch right from factory. But for now I will leave it as it is. For the future, if anyone has an idea for a simple engraving attachment for the milling machine, let me know. The last part for this video is the dial clamping nut. Again it's made out of some unknown steel as it doesn't matter here. For the clamping of the dial, I'm using an M10 by 1mm fine thread here. And this nut again needs some nice cross knurling too.
And here you see knurling doesn't go well every time. I think the part diameter wasn't right, so I got this ugly pattern and had to do it again. Luckily, the second try was a success. I cut the part on the bandsaw and screwed it on a brass arbor for machining the backside. Again, I'm using a stone for polishing the surface. And that's the finished dial locking nut. And here again, all the finished parts for this episode. As said, in the next part I will finish the project with making the new spindle, some small parts and a tiny anti-backlash nut. I hope you enjoyed this build, thank you all for watching and till next.